I did not have much reading time in April, like, at all. This is going to be a very short little wrap-up, but it's going to be a wrap-up nonetheless. The first book I read this month is The Autobiography of Malcolm X, as told to Alex Haley. This one's very self-explanatory. It is the autobiography of Malcolm X. It follows not only his childhood, but it goes and the last chapter talks about his death. I will say I was really pleasantly surprised with this one. I kind of just picked it up on a whim. I really want to learn more about... I mean, Malcolm X and just prominent black figures and civil rights leaders in general. I've been on kind of like a memoir kick too, so that swayed me towards this. But I will say, this was so much more interesting than I thought. Like, I, I thought it was going to be interesting. I don't want to say that I thought it was going to be boring. But I will say for almost like the first, I don't know, maybe third or half of the book, there's nothing about politics whatsoever. And you just follow his life, like from his childhood to him dropping out of school in middle school and going to Boston and the street life of Harlem in like the 50s, I think it was. But not only do I feel like that perfectly captures the time period, especially for like black Americans during that time, which is something that you don't often hear about, but I also think it's just so, so necessary to understand like Malcolm X and who he is and where his beliefs stemmed from. Like he first started learning about the Nation of Islam and also like black history while in prison. This man could barely read. He could barely write. Do you know how he taught himself to read and write? By reading the dictionary and copying down every single word and its definition. Like, excuse me? That's insane. That's insane. He was just such a remarkable man. And I also really enjoyed learning a lot about the Nation of Islam and afterwards his split from the Nation of Islam. Can you see my cat? He's right here. Hey, baby. This is Gigi. He's joining me today. Anyway, I feel like I really learned a lot. I don't feel like I had a great idea of who Malcolm X was before I picked up this book. And I will say that after this, I'm even more confused about like how the public talks about him. As I was reading this, I had a conversation with someone in one of my classes and they were talking about how Malcolm X was like the violent one of the civil rights era and MLK was the peaceful one, which is, there's a lot to unpack there in general about MLK and his like actual beliefs and how they've been sanitized. But what's crazy to me is that perpetual belief that Malcolm X was somehow violent when there's just nothing in the things he was saying or his actions or him that was like violent politically. He, I mean, obviously he went to jail. He was an armed robber for a period of time. But like when people say he's violent, they're talking about his like political alignment and his ideas during the civil rights period. And they're just not. He was calling like the white man a devil, which is fair and true. After he split with the Nation of Islam, he never, he like rescinded that rhetoric and he was very public about how he regretted the stuff some of the things that he had said and it wasn't his current position anymore i just think it's really interesting how his like public persona was just has just been so heavily propagandized it's a really interesting read it's so so thought-provoking and it's also really easy to get into and really interesting so i definitely recommend it and i give it five stars after that i picked up the dispossessed by ursula k Le Guin. i had to check what her middle initial was this is my first ursula Le Guin novel which i was very excited about it's a little hard to describe so it's science fiction and it takes place in two different like societies i guess so the first society is your like typical capitalist like hellscape and <laughs> set very far into the future and the second society actually takes place on that planet's moon and it consists of revolutionaries like anarchist revolutionaries who left the original society and like colonized the moon instead um and it's like an anarchist I don't want to say utopia, but it's an anarchist society. So first off, right off the bat, that's so cool. <laughs> that's such an interesting premise. And essentially in this book, you're following someone who's from the anarchist society. He's a physicist. He's like a really influential scientist. And he ends up going tor back to the capitalist society in order to pursue his research. So you're following two different timelines, his life growing up on the an in the anarchist society, and then when he goes back to the capitalist society and his views on that. It was really cool, just the idea of like how someone who grew up in a different society would think of 
capitalism and like how we live today. I think Le Guin was really clever with that. For instance, just like the certain things that they would say or for instance, like in the anarchist society, there aren't really any curse words because there isn't like a belief in hell. So that gets rid of like hell, damnation. And then in the anarchist society, they're also like very open and free about sexuality. So saying fuck isn't like crazy to them and doesn't really express anything. It's just little tiny bits like that that were really interesting to me. Like, how would I think differently had I not been raised in a capitalist dystopian hellscape? I just think it's really cool that not only was this very theoretical and, like, deep thinking, but then at the same time it was still a really interesting novel. I think towards the beginning it was a little slow starting, it was a little kind of hard to catch on to everything that was going on, but you quickly get over that as the story advances. And I really do think it's worth the read, not only because it's like very interesting and thought provoking, but also because it's just a good book. <laughs> I ended up only giving it four stars because just for me, I didn't feel like that personal connection, like I had to keep reading. Um, but that's just very subjective. And it could also have been because I didn't have much reading time this month. But yeah, I'm definitely very, 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 very interested in picking up more Ursula Le Guin. This makes me so excited to pick up her other stuff. And I will definitely be doing that soon. So yeah, that's all. I only read two books this month, which kind of sucks, but that's how life is. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Goodbye.